Good morning, Modern Stedders. It's Friday, and Friday is Modern Stedder Update. Let's go check and see what the temperature is in the cave this morning. Let's see. It is 38 and 39% humidity. We gotta try to get the humidity up in here. If anybody has any ways of getting the humidity up in the cave without using a humidifier, leave it in the comments down below. I'd love to find a different way other than using an electronic humidifier. But the prosciutto and the copa are doing amazing. The hooks are staying in our boards, which is good. It's nice and cool. We were supposed to be going over to some friend's house tonight for dinner, but they just called and said they're not feeling well. So this is the great thing about having all this delicious food in your house. I was like, oh, we gotta cook dinner tonight. So since we're all getting ready to go to work, I'm gonna put a chicken in the crock pot. And then we'll have chicken for dinner tonight. It'll be ready when we get home. Look how bright those new lights are. This is one of the great things about having all this delicious food that we raised here in our freezer, hanging in our root cellar, however we're storing it, whether it's canned, you name it. It's ready to go food. If we know how to cook it, we know how to prepare it, we're always gonna have food, good food to eat at the house. We're going to be having Doug and Andy from Hand Human Farm coming out in April. And we're going to be learning more of how to prepare our pork into beautiful food. In October, we had a three day pig harvesting class here. And we learned how to take the pig from pasture to the freezer. In this class, we're going to be learning how to take the pig from pasture to our plate and to the freezer. We're going to be learning how to cut up all the meats, wrap them all up put them in the freezer, we're gonna take it another step. Now we're gonna go, what can we do with this beautiful food? You have all this great pork, lard, you have the intestines you can clean out and make natural casings with, you can make sausage, you can make bratwurst, you can make terrinis, you can make some awesome stock. We're gonna be learning how to do all of that, how to prepare it, and how to preserve it, how to cure meats, how to smoke meats. I'm looking forward to this. We're gonna be learning a ton and this is going to change and just up our food game here. We're going to go from being able to make the best food possible to knowing how to cook it and how to save it and preserve it for us and our family. I'm looking forward to this. This is going to be so much fun. Spring can't get here soon enough. Put it on low. We have our sauerkraut. That's been fermenting for over seven days now. So now we just need to try it. Maybe tonight we'll try this with our dinner. I'm looking forward to that. We also have some kombucha that's got to get bottled up and get ready for the second fermentation. Maybe we can do that tonight too since we have change of plans. Right Pluto? You want some chicken feed? I'm looking forward to 2018. This is gonna be a good year on our homestead. We got 
been planting our garden. We got our seeds on order. They're not here yet. I'm hoping they're here any day now. I've been talking with a hatchery and we're going to be working on comparing some different meat birds with each other. We're going to be getting some new egg layers, some different breeds in. And we're going to be comparing those chicken breeds of how they lay their eggs, how big they are, how well they produce, and just how good of a chicken they are. We got a lot of things in the work here at Lumna Acres. It's still pretty out. Look at that. Winter here might be cold and snowy, but it is beautiful. Mr. Figaro keeping an eye on us. Good morning, chickens. The chickens are doing really well and thriving on the deep bedding here in our winter chicken coop. It's been keeping them warm, it's keeping them clean, and it keeps the smell down. So if you're in a climate where it gets cold and you have a hard time cleaning out your chicken coop, do the deep bedding method from fall to springtime. Just keep adding to it and then come springtime we'll empty out all our deep bedding and we'll turn it into beautiful compost to grow our food this spring. Now, if you think I'm crazy for going through all this work and effort, going out in this frigid weather to feed the chickens and the animals, you're right. It would be a lot easier to go and buy food at the grocery store. But if we go to the grocery store, we can't buy this quality of food. We do this for our health and to provide our family with the best food possibly that we can and to share it with friends and to share our story with you. We want to encourage people to do the same thing. It's not just about feeding your family. It's about feeding your family the best food you can so your family can be the healthiest that they can and you can be. We've all had health issues. I still battle some. Our diet isn't where we want it to be yet, but we're in the process of getting there and that's a progression, and that's part of our story here. And we just want to encourage you to do the same thing. Oh, looks like the piggies brought their water dish in the house. Them silly girls. And having animals in the winter time is good for you too. Some days you don't want to get outside when it's cold, snowy, and miserable weather, but you have to come out and take care of your animals. And that's a healthy thing to get outside in the fresh air all the time. The pigs are doing good. They're getting nice and hairy, staying warm this cold winter. They're acclimating perfectly to this weather, which is great. They're gonna be nice, strong, healthy animals. The feed is working out perfect for us. I'm so glad we have that. And I'm sure the pigs are too. They have constant feed. 
and they're gonna love that. That just helps keep them warmer also. Coming in. There's Figaro keeping an eye on us. You know what I'm thinking? I think I have just enough time before I have to leave here to get some dough ready so we can make a nice beautiful bread and have that to go with dinner tonight. Yeah. We made a nice artisan bread. You let the dough rise between 8 and 12 hours, so that'll be perfect. I'll make it now before I go to work and get home. We can put it into a ball, put it in our Dutch oven and bake it. And we'll have some nice beautiful bread to go with the delicious pasture-raised chicken. I don't know what else we're going to have for sides, but we're going to figure this out and it's going to be good. We have our flour in our bowl. To that we're going to add our yeast. We buy our yeast in a big bag. It's a lot cheaper buying it this way versus a little glass jar or the little packets. I think I paid like three dollars for a huge package. I'm going to take our pink salt. Now that our dough has been resting for a minimum of eight hours, we need to flour our working area. What I like to do at this point is I like to have a cookie sheet I can put it on, flour the cookie sheet. We're not gonna bake on this, but I like having the cookie sheet so that way we can move the dough around while we let it rest again. Flour the dough a little bit, get my hands covered in flour. And I just work out. We don't want to knead it. We just want to shape it into a ball. And I cover it back up and let it rest for an hour. Why I cook so many, we can have leftovers and make breakfast with them. And then we can even have some nice, delicious toast.
So what did you think about your first experience with sauerkraut? It was okay. She ate it though. Yeah. I enjoyed it. It was my first time ever I having sauerkraut. I mean, it's not something I want to eat by itself or like this bread. Right? No, but, it but it's good for a side. It's good for it you. Is because I know that it's got lots of pro probiotics in it that I right. like. Ah, oh, this is good. Well, keep eating it. But there's some stuff you can't just eat. Oh, this is good because of that. Right. Because it's not. No. Thanks for liking, commenting, and subscribing, and we'll see you right back here tomorrow at Bum Acres. Hey guy, tomorrow I'm saying self sufficiency and freedom. Bye. Bye.